Okay, welcome back. This is Richard for our final video, number five of five, in the uh, resource guide that was provided for you on five tools to improve the success and impact of your conversations. Tool number one was to be interested instead of being a ting, be a Ted. Opine only when invited was number two. Respect personal boundaries was number three. Number four, Ask questions with the intent to understand instead of with the intent to respond. And today's discussion is on neutral space. When you are neutral inside the space you share with another person, you give them safety. It's comfortable. And then when you ask questions, you orchestrate the direction of the conversation, which they freely then give to you. So one of the problems that I've seen within the dialogues and conversations that people have is this fear of conflict. People run from it constantly, and there's also a confusion between the two, conflict and contention. So I'd like to clarify that for you if I could. Conflict really is the same result but a different path to get there. If I want to climb a mountain and I want to climb it with my friend, I want to go up the north side, he wants to go up the south, we have a conflict. We both want the same thing. We simply see a different path which, which, with which to travel. Conflict is required for you to progress. If you are always running from the fight, constantly sweeping the elephant under the rug, the overall pacifist who just wants to get along and won't engage in any kind of healthy discord, then you're not going to have any progress because you're concerned with who is right. Conflict only cares about what is right. What is right should always trump who is right because it gives everybody a feeling of satisfaction. Contention, on the other hand, is where you make conflict personal. It's where no progress is made and who is right trumps what is right. Um, a pacifist is no different than someone who's a bully. Both of them are worried about who is right. So I want to tell you about a study done in 1964 by a, name, a gentleman by the name of Kenneth Boulding. He conducted a study on conflict and he brought together a group of managers from across multiple industries. He then formed, formed them into teams and told them that their problem-solving techniques are going to be analyzed. What he did not tell these managers was that there was a devil's advocate or a confederate placed on each team. And that critic's role was to challenge the team's solutions and push them to consider additional ideas throughout the problem-solving exercise. What he discovered, Mr. Boulding, was that the teams that had a devil's advocate, someone who provided conflict, all performed significantly better in their task. They produced multiple options for successfully solving a problem. When we take the path least traveled, we benefit in ways we could never have foreseen because our energy and focus is on the conflict and all we see is a potential pain and a lot of effort. Halfway through the experiment, Boulding allowed each team to expel one member. Every team having a devil's advocate chose to kick that critic off the island. He then observed the quality of those teams' analysis and problem-solving ability again and they rapidly declined. He concluded that the highest performing teams ended up eliminating their competitive advantage. So why would we, which they did, discard the very tool, task, or person that provides us exactly what we want? Because they didn't like how the critics' comments made them feel, they shoved that person away. The idea here is that in conversations, it's okay not to agree as long as you're seeking to understand. You can remain neutral by simply observing what's going on and questioning them instead of defending yours. So remember your homework assignment on this one, or your action step, is to find someone that you don't agree with and hold a five-minute conversation to only to find out what they are thinking. Don't tell them what you are thinking. It will be a breath of fresh air, I can assure you. Well, thank you very much for joining me in these five videos. I've certainly appreciated having you along. I hope that this has been beneficial and that you've been practicing them. All the best to you now.